All right. All right. And that's not duct tape, is it? That's Gorilla tape. Gorilla. Anybody know the difference? Because I don't. It's a lot heavier. It's a lot. Trademark. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I think Gorilla Tape claims that maybe stickier, you know. But um, it does should, paddle repair. Yep. Emergency. <laughs> um, so let's just say a uh, major T-bone occurred where there was punctures, like Dale mentioned. Um, where it might be fairly large, you know, very crinkled or crushed in. Um, some people carry a piece of plastic that would reinforce over that. This is just a uh, old cutting board. You see all the scratches. So that's, yeah, it just doesn't take up anything. It just lays flat. I don't know, plastic. Yeah, um, this was pre-silicon. Um, so you could actually cut that down if you wanted and lay over there. And actually, let's say the, the, the hole was anywhere outside the cockpit. You could lay that on there and then roll it around it several times and it would probably get you to shore. Um, so like on an um, expedition, that may eventually allow water to seep in. So you've seen the two-part epoxy that looks like Tootsie Roll that you knead together. You could actually press some of that into the cracks, all those all spider web looking cracks or punctures where some pieces are raised up and then you could actually cut this down to put on top of it as reinforcement. So this is that two part epoxy which I hope to never use. Um, so again this is a small more compact if you really don't want to carry the big roll this takes up a lot of space in the bag. Uh, you can roll it over there. I forgot what this was for, but it made a nice thing just to take some duct tape off and put it there. They sell these rolls like that, the cute, cute little rolls, for about as much as the large rolls. Uh, there's one fella, I don't think it was Howard Jeffs, some other guy really recommends your basic electrical tape for really uh, it's, it really sticks on fingers real well I meant to put some on a blister of mine so it can really it sticks better than a band-aid you basic electrical tape um, now um, here's my um, there's my other Denzo tape package so the the British folks you know they're concerned about seem to be more concerned about boat repair than us because they have a lot of rocky shores. You know, they have very few nice beaches that can land on. You know, they call them in, in Scotland, they call them shingles, which is, they have strange terms for a lot of stuff. Uh, shingles, I tried to get a definition of it or somebody point me out shingles, but they're kind of like small rocks. You know, so that's the best beaches they often have are shingle beaches. So they, they, they have to do a lot of rocky landing, so puncturing is uh, more likely over there. So, um, one of the, the favorites, uh, and I'm a, I'm a protege, not a protege, I'm a disciple of Michael Dennis, who thinks Denso tape, you've heard of Denso tape? It's real sticky stuff that's really prevalent. I think you can buy it at hardware stores over in the UK. Um, but I had some in a roll this morning, and Tom made him a Denso. Uh, actually, this one right here, um, this is something that Lee, Lee Martin also had. Um, so this is called Protecto Wrap. This this is like um, a piece. It comes that wide in big rolls. It's made to flash windows before the siding goes on to cover over the flange of a window. So you peel off um, a the backing, and it's quite sticky. Um, I did an experiment with this stuff to see how long it would stay on my boat. Nigel says the problem with this is it doesn't stick well in cold weather. Okay, I will, I'll use maybe Denso tape if I have to in theory. Uh, so I put a piece of this on my hull here that people all the time ask about. Uh, and it stayed on for like, I'd say, rather than say a year, I'll say 
50 kayak uses before the edges started peeling up. And in order to get this off, it, um, it just did not come off very easily. So what you see left on there is the sticky gooeyness. This isn't as gooey as Denso tape. Denso tape, we have gloves in here to handle it. You know, it may not be practical to put on surgical gloves out on the uh, out in the open water, but if you're on land, because that stuff is very sticky and gooey. It's tar-based. It makes it very uh, impervious. They use it to wrap all rig pilings. It comes in big, big rolls. So this is something you can get uh, from Home Depot and cut it up. And inside the bag is like a ShamWell super absorbent cloth because anything sticks better if it's dry and warm. Okay? Um, so I'll put one of those in there. Um, for that. So that's this is like the Protecto wrap. It comes in uh, manufacturing different brands. Um, with the Denso tape, we wrapped it up in uh, wax paper. Lee Martin had some that's been in his wax paper so long that because the wax paper is oil based, the Denso tape petroleum based substance they use is actually turning the wax paper like yellow. I mean, it's just penetrating. That's how gooey it is. So, you know, Nigel, when he's assessing people, I think it's a five star thing. I don't think they do it at four star. Um, they want you to have a boat repair kit in your pocket so that you can do on the water boat repair. He's big on that. You know, Who's that? Nigel. So, I've heard him preach, say at least five times if you want for you know, a five star assessment. Well, with him, he's going to ask you to pull out your boat repair kit here for fixing on the water a imaginary hole. And, of course, part of the boat repair him is getting the boats, uh, one boat over the other one, although there's two different ways. We won't really go into that today, but it makes a fun scenario, even in um, calm water, doing an on-the-water boat repair, the two different ways. Lee, uh, yep. can I stop you there? This is mine. So this is my diesel tape, but I, I got water in my bag. There's no way I can have my shanty in here right. after repeated exactly. uses. Is this still, is this going to work? Yeah, this will work. Uh, good question. One one problem you use these true ziplocks, which have a high fail rate. So those are the double double zip freezer bags, yeah. which I've not had any trouble getting water in them. But okay. you're right. You're you're gonna get water in there, and the ShamWow. And then I have another bag that's inside of there. Uh, even though the Denso tape gets wet over time, I pull it out to use it. I'm still good. Okay. Yes. Yeah, the Denso tape, like I said, they wrap oil rig pylons in it, and it lasts forever, keeps the pylons from rusting. Okay, here's something I learned in Scotland. What is this? Looks like or is? It's an inner tube bicycle. Yeah, so I went to REI because I wanted to have one of these and um, asked them if they had any uh, used inner tubes. And they said, yeah. They actually gave me two of them. So you just slice it down the middle and yeah. cut out the section with that. So this guy... You can go to a tire store, an old tire for places, truck tires. They'll have that old truck tire inner tubes. With a garage full of bike inner tubes. Yeah. I'll mail them to anyone who wants. So... <laughs> Self-addressed stamped in. So you might say, well, duct tape will do the same thing, but you can actually stretch this. Again, the hole, the, the um, hole being underneath your kayak somewhere not here okay by the way if the hole is in here you really can't wrap duct tape or any of that saran wrap looking stuff that Howard Jeff sells can can you or you won't be able to get back in the kayak so again if the hole is here then you're gonna have to do just flat taping uh, or epoxy you know so uh, but this, you can actually wrap, wrap it around the boat and stretch it. So you're obviously thinking now, well, how do you tie off the ends? So that's where you can pull out the duct tape and put some around it. So this has some compressive effect. It creates more of like a little gasket seal. So that was just a neat little trick he had. Who else has got different ideas for boat repair? Well, once you hold your picture, you come to water all, or is that a 
paddle forks in there to displace the water. Very good. Very good. Excellent. Um, I meant to mention that. So a lot of people, that if, if they're out there, and let's say they, they don't want to do any on the water repair, yeah, you can get water in. Let's just say the worst case scenario fills up with water and you've got to somehow repair it before you pump it out. But you can, I've heard, the, the, paddle, uh, the paddle float. Let's say it happened back here. You put your, uh, um, looking to see if I have one, put your uh, paddle float back there and blow it up. Okay, that can displace a lot of water. Uh, even if you didn't have boat repair material, if you displace enough water, if your paddle float is big enough, and I actually carry one of those triangular, when I'm out surfing, and I, I don't need a lot of hatch space, and it actually may, I don't think it's in this boat, but it's like a triangular uh, float bag. Yeah, wet water boat. Yeah, so that takes up a lot of space. Um, also, I've heard the beach ball. You know, leave the blow here. You have to blow it up while it's in there. Anything else? Any other magic stuff? So, um, so anyway, like I said, that Howard Jeff's got a lot of this stuff for sale, and that Saran wrap thing seemed pretty cool. But you gotta still gotta have some duct tape to seal off the ends of it. Maybe Maybe you also carry a backup package. <laughs> <laughs> That's part two of today. Okay. Yeah. Um, you can build your whole new house. Um, okay. Since James asked, I'm going to bring out my first day hatch replacement kit. So I'm at uh, on four star training, I believe. I don't. Sometimes when I do training and followed by assessments, later becomes a blur as to what happened during training or assessment. So fortunately. I had been shown this by one of my teachers, Bill Bremer, who makes the Greenland paddles. And um, so he was trying to prepare me for four-star assessment, and he said, you want to have a hatch, emergency hatch recover kit. So um, he said, all you need is a trash bag and some type of bungee to go around it to hold it on. So. I have got a borrowed Romany. One of my neighbors at the coast let me borrow their Romany before I had mine. And it was not tethered. And out there in uh, the South Channel, we'd been out of Lazarado Creek. The wind was blowing pretty high. And I decided I wanted to reach back in here and get a water bottle. And so in that process, this flew off. And the NDKs, or the ones at that time, do not float, so it's sunk. So I'm thinking, okay, I just bought my neighbors a new hatch cover. So I had to go to shore. Fortunately, we weren't very far, but it was embarrassing because I had to go to shore and people had, I had to hold up the group. So um, I went to shore, fumbled through my bag. You know, uh, I may have pulled that over um, like that. And this is just some bungee material. All right, that one's too big. This one, I think, may be the one. Actually, I've got this made to wear. Double. Uh, yeah, you can double it. Um, let's, see. Uh, let's see if I can get it over there. Sure. All right, somebody wrapped up. Somebody wrapped up. Can you help me? Mm -hmm. All right. All right, you hold those. Um, all right, so we got that on there. I had it made or tight because I recently redid that knot. So may have made it too tight, but you've got different sizes. So that actually held me until we got back home to the takeout, which fortunately this incident happened, I think, uh, as we were on the way home. But anyway, this is cheap. I mean, yeah, that's not real puncture resistance, but unless you've got a serious amount of breaking waves coming down, that's probably going to stay on there, wouldn't you think? So anyway, so that's my first emergency hatch recovery kit, which may be all you would need. So, Dale, that's all I got. <laughs> okay, good. Um, I, I wanted to segue for just a few short seconds before we get on the water. You noticed uh, it, it 
when Lee opened his back hatch, there, there was some gear back there, and so it just made me think, maybe wonder what was in the front and in the middle and how that weight is distributed. Swing weight matters for boat maneuverability. So you want your boat to be balanced with the most weight closest to the middle and low in the boat. Things lighter weight further out. If you take an empty boat and you stuff a dromedary, one gallon dromedary bag in the nose of the boat, the boat will become very difficult to handle and difficult to roll because that swing weight, you know, the, the, the swing weight resists inertia. So uh, when you're surfing, that matters even more. But uh, you know, when you have to fill your boat up for expedition purposes, do your best to uh, to keep the weight as close to the middle and as low as possible to improve your uh, maneuverability. I, I do have a pretty much equal distribution for that reason. Tell from the way you were surfing yesterday that it was a balanced boat. Mm -hmm. I okay. would like to put more yeah. right behind it. Yeah. I think you preach putting it behind the seat. It's Maybe better to get that balance right. You know, there's lots of uh, lots of compromises. If it's gonna, you know, if you can't afford for it to get wet, then behind the seat, or if you need a well, foam block like I'm that, in you know. day hatch. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So in your day hatch, even if you've got water and, uh, and a storm cag, the water goes forward, the storm cag goes to the back. If I don't have a full day hatch, I use a, a paddle float to fill up the back end of the day hatch to keep that weight forward. You also don't want things banging around in your boat while you're surfing. But, you know, it's, it'll disturb your balance and perception and cause other people to think there's a collision. And, you know, potentially if it's like a metal, metal water bottle, it could damage the boat. All right.